and says that he understands most of the things you you are telling, but, but it's not the same for him to speak. Yeah, I understand. Uh, Ivan, this is the the number uh, 90, 98 talks Ivan has done through this pandemic. Uh, 98 talks. 98? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Y es la primer entrenadora, o sea, entrenadora mujer que está en la charla. Hemos tenido eh, psicó, o sea, mujeres, pero de otras profesiones. Pero entrenadora de básquetbol es la primera y casi casi cerramos con, con una entrenadora, que es algo muy bueno para nosotros. Ok, and you are the first woman, women coach, because, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. There have been psychologists and, ah, and yeah. any more other more other kind of professional, but right. you're the first, the first ah. coach. Oh, thank you. Well, I, I'm honored. Yeah, I, hope yeah. I, I hope I do it justice. Yeah. <laughs> you have to do for all of them. Muy bien, pues ya estamos en Facebook. Estoy compartiendo la transmisión. We are, estamos en 30 segundos. We are now in Facebook and we're going to start in, in less than a minute. Okay. I can share my big screen. Mm -hmm. uh, oops, sorry. Let's get back to that. No, no, no. It's, <laughs> it's better to start with, with you on the screen. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, you want me to take that off? I think so. Uh, okay. After the presentation, and, th and after Ivan in introduced you, I okay. think it's. Then better. we can share. Sounds good. Bueno, pues vamos a iniciar la charla de, de esta tarde, la segunda del día. Tuvimos doble jornada hoy, en lo que es el penúltimo día de transmisiones del conversatorio. Este. Bueno, pues como saben, ya mañana terminamos. Mañana completaremos el número mágico de 100 pláticas y, y nos vamos a hacer otras cosas. Pero bueno, estamos terminando con, con muy buenos invitados, como hemos tenido to, todo este tiempo. Y hoy tenemos a una invitada de lujo también, la coach Alison McNeil, que, que estaba yo resaltando hace unos segundos, que es la primera entrenadora de básquetbol que tenemos después de tantas charlas, ¿no? Este lo cual ahora que lo pensaba me da un poquito de, de como coraje, tristeza, porque quizá debemos haber tenido más, pero bueno, sí tuvimos este, otras mujeres, ¿no? Pues periodistas, psicólogas, maestras de educación física, árbitros. Eh, ¿Perdón? A por las 200 charlas. <risa> sí, <risa> este, y, eh, puede ser, ¿no? Más adelante. <risa> Pero bueno, no, eh, pero entrenadoras de básquetbol que hemos tenido muchos, eh, es la primera entrenadora mujer y pues nos da mucho gusto, ¿no? Cerrar, prácticamente cerrar así, eh, que también es importante, ¿no? Y eh, también, tal, que, también quizá tenga que ver con mucho con que todavía no se valora tanto el, el trabajo de las mujeres, ¿no? En esta profesión, ojalá cada vez haya más en México y en todos lados y bueno, este, pues nos da muchísimo gusto. Voy a hablar rápidamente de la de la trayectoria de la coach, aunque creo que en la presentación ella también tiene algunos puntos, pero bueno, es, fue entrenadora de la Selección Nacional de Canadá durante el, los mundiales de 2006 y 2010, eh, en los Olímpicos de 2012, eh, lo que ha sido la mejor actuación de la Selección Canadiense en Juegos Olímpicos. Eh, actualmente está en un centro de, de alto rendimiento, por decirlo así, ¿no? laborando, aparte que hace un trabajo en... Con, en algún colegio ahí en Vancouver donde ella radica y recibió el premio Jeff Govan de la Asociación de Entrenadores de Canadá por su contribución a la formación y desarrollo de los entrenadores de su país así que para nosotros es un gusto, un lujo tener hoy a la coach muchas gracias coach y pues estamos listos para escucharla el tema de hoy es la ofensiva Princeton Okay, coach right. Ivan has introduced you, uh, <laughs> and and as you as you have here uh, talking about your work and on the national team and so on. All right. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Um, honored to be here. I had no idea that Ivan had done so many clinics, and he's a hardworking guy. But I'm not surprised because he's we've kept in touch now for quite some time. So it's uh, it's exciting to be here, and I'm I'm happy to share some information and. Um, 
this uh, whole pandemic has been interesting for everybody learning from other countries and lots of clinics. And um, I've been listening to clinics from all around the world and I've given some clinics all around the world. So uh, thank you for inviting me to do this and I'm looking forward to doing it. Ok, Iván, pues gracias por invitarla y, y que no, no sabía que era la charla número 98 pero que, y que habías hecho tantos, tanto contenido, pero que no le extraña por lo insistente que, que, que eres y, y, y cómo la has contactado y, y que qué buen momento ha sido este para aprender de entrenadores de, de, de todo el mundo. Muchas gracias, la he molestado mucho, por fin la, la tenemos con nosotros. When you when you want to start. Okay, I'll start. All right, I'll uh, I'll share my screen so we can all see what I'm going to be talking about here. Uh, there we go. Not great with technology. Mm -hmm. Welcome. I got that right. Um, all right. A little bit about myself, just quickly. I think probably Ivan talked about it, but I was head coach of the national team for uh, about 11 years. Uh, our team went to two world championships and then the London Olympics. I was 16 years in the national team program, both junior, senior. And then I was at University of Oregon, Simon Fraser University. And now I'm a high school coach, uh, wrapping up the end of my career and really enjoying that. Um, so that's me. Okay. Uh, que como también había dado algunos datos, Iván, pero que eso es lo que se ve en la pantalla es parte de su trayectoria. Ha sido durante 11 años... Eh, entrenadora del equipo nacional de Canadá, eh, participando en dos campeonatos del mundo y unos Juegos Olímpicos, eh, pues 16 años en el programa de trabajo de jóvenes en, en equipos nacionales de Canadá, eh, entrenadora asociada en Oregón eh, y ahora en, también en Simon Fraser University y ahora en el final de su carrera eh, pues está trabajando en un high school, como ha dicho Iván, y nos ha comentado antes que también eh, haciendo mentorías con entrenadores allí. Um, so, uh, I think a big event for our national team was on July 1st in 2012. Uh, in Ankara, Turkey, we qualified for the Olympic Games. It was on Canada Day, which was really exciting, our birthday. And it was the last possible birth and we hadn't qualified in 12 years. So that was a huge day for us. And one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the Princeton offense is that I thought Of course, the players are the ones who qualified. I don't want to take that away, but uh, I think our offense, the Princeton offense, helped us because it was so different. So I want to talk about that. Okay, pues eh, como dice ahí, eh, fue en un día muy importante cuando Canadá calificó para unos Juegos Olímpicos porque en ese momento, desde el año 2000, no habían eh, calificado y sin embargo, desde ese momento han, han calificado tres veces consecutivas para los Juegos Olímpicos. Eh, y además eh, la calificación fue en el día de Canadá, con lo cual fue un, un día y un momento muy importante para la historia del baloncesto eh, de Canadá en Ankara, Turquía. And that's the picture of us all happy, everybody. And I always say it's uh, I'm here speaking about something, but it always takes a ton of people to be successful. And I'm sure every coach out there knows that you have to you have to have a big support team. Muy bien, eh, dice que esa es la foto que resume un poco todo, que ella es la que está aquí hablando de, de un momento tan exitoso como ese, eh, pero que conlleva el trabajo de mucha gente eh, conseguir un éxito así. And I'm the littlest one. Bueno, eh, <risa> <risa> no, no, él dice que ella es de las menos right. importantes, pero no. So something on the Princeton offense here. Um, first, this is just a little bit about my high school team, because I'm going to hopefully show a little bit of film on them too. So we've won our back-to-back -back provincial, like our area, uh, our whole province uh, championships. So that we're quite a strong team. Okay, quiero hablar un poco de su equipo actual y de cómo han sido dos veces consecutivas eh, campeones provinciales con ese equipo. And I told them that I was speaking uh, the clinic in Mexico and that I would definitely show pictures of them. And they were happy about that. So here okay. we go. <laughs> okay que les ha dicho que iba a mostrar fotos suyas en un clinic que iba a dar en México y, y aquí están las fotos. They want to be included. <laughs> claro que querían ser incluidas, así que van a estar muy contentas de verse aquí. And um, very proud of the fact that we had, uh, and, and I'll, I'm telling you some of this because it'll lead to the, talk about the offense, but 
we had four players just from our one high school team uh, represent Canada. Uh, so they were, they're a great group of kids and there's the four of them. Three made our cadet team. So U17 and one made our U19 team. Okay. Que dice que, que también es para estar muy orgullosos como tienen cuatro jugadoras que han conseguido representar al equipo nacional de Canadá, han conseguido hacer el, estar allí, eh, tres en el equipo cadete, que, que para nosotros sería sub-16, eh, y una en el equipo sub-19. They did, they did all the work. Uh, they don't get there, the athlete, without doing the work. But I think some of the things that we do offensively help them to develop to, to this level, help them along the path. Ok, y de que ellas han trabajado duro para eso, pero que algunas de las cosas que ellas hacen, supongo que relacionadas con la eh, ofensiva Princeton, que las han ayudado a llegar a ese nivel. So, I always talk about what is, what is good offense, what makes good offense. And I think there's a bunch of things, but there, you have to provide opportunities to score in various ways. I, I don't believe it can be one way or you're too easy to stop. So, transition. I'll let you go. Que para ella... Una, un buen ataque es aquel que, que en el que se puede anotar de, de varias formas diferentes, que no, no en una única manera. Por ejemplo, en transición. Uh, cutting. Cortando. <laughs> Penetration. Taking the ball into the lane. La canasta. Yeah. Penetrate and kick. Penetrate penetrar and y pass. descargar para vosotros. Penetrar y pasar fuera. Uh, Post-ups. Okay. Desde el poste, posteando. I know a lot of people aren't using the post-up anymore. I think you have to find opportunities to get easy hoops, so post-ups. Yeah, que, que no está tan, tan de moda últimamente postear, pero que se consiguen canastas fáciles. Obviously, perimeter shots, three-point shooting. Y tiros de tres puntos y desde el perímetro. Offensive rebounds, another way to get some opportunities to score. A través del rebote ofensivo. And obviously getting to the free throw line. Y consiguiendo ir a la línea de tiros libres. So, to me, to have a, a good varied offense, you want to try to hit on all these things. But if your team isn't great at running, then maybe you only transition when it's really, it's really there. If your team is a, a great three-point shooting team, maybe you do a bit more of that. I think you have to design offense to fit your team. Okay. Que, que para ella deben estar incluidas todas este tipo de situaciones en un buen ataque, pero que dependiendo de las características de tu equipo, si es un equipo que corre bien, si es un equipo que tiene buen tiro exterior, pues harás más énfasis en, en, en ese aspecto, que la, el ataque debe, debe encajar en las características de tu equipo. So the Princeton offense, I think, um, and again, this is just how we did it with our national team and how we do it with my high school team. I've seen it different ways. You can vary it as you want, but it's a a series of continuous two and three player actions, constant, and it can run continuously. Obviously with a, a 24 second shot clock, there's a lot of people that say mm, it's not as effective. And I would, I would beg to differ with that. I disagree. I think that it can still be very effective. Okay, que por eso utiliza un ataque como el ataque Princeton, que es una serie de situaciones en las que eh, de dos y tres jugadores están eh, involucrados y que se juega constantemente eh, con el reloj de 24 segundos eh, que para algunos algunas personas no es tan apropiada eh, pero que ella no está en absoluto de acuerdo eh, que se ajusta perfectamente a ese tiempo. Uh, the options in the offense are varied and limitless and they can be modified for your team. Que, pues las opciones eh, son muy variadas, eh, casi sin límite y que pueden ser modificadas según las habilidades de tu equipo. And uh, last but not least, I think the offense is designed to be able to play late into a shot clock because there's constant scoring actions in each phase. But you don't have to play late in a shot clock. But I feel like there's no panic at the end of a shot clock when you have something that's continuous. Muy bien. Y que por último, pero no, no lo menos importante, que, que también este ataque se puede jugar en las situaciones en las que quedan pocos segundos en el, en el reloj, eh, porque se pueden encontrar acciones para anotar eh, consistentes en cada fase de la, de la ejecución, como dice ella, eh, y que no hace falta eh, entrar en pánico en el final del ataque. 
Um, so I want to talk just kind of a little bit quickly about this is again the way we did it. So we had entries. And so we had, a, I'll just talk about them quickly, but away wings out and brush. So three different ways to get into our, our offense. And that way it was not as easy to scout where it was coming from and how we were doing it. So I'm sure there's, there's many, but um, we kept it pretty simple. And with, an, with our high school team, we only have two right now. We had two entries. So away wings out and brush. I'll show them further. Ok, pues que, que esta es la manera en la que, en la que se divide la, el ataque, en la que se, hay una serie de entradas eh, que con su equipo high, de high school actual solo utilizan dos de ellas, eh, pero que pues el sentido de las entradas tan diferentes son también dificultar el scouting y luego se entra en, en la fase eh, del juego. And then the phases we again that we we call them, but uh, chin, strong side chin, point away over corner, corner over low post. It doesn't really matter. But but uh, again, with my high school team, because they're younger and we don't have as much time, uh, they don't have the basketball IQ of the national team athletes. We only really had um, three phases. Okay, eh, esas son las fases en, en las que están incluidas en la ofensiva Princeton, que, que igual, de igual manera, solo utiliza posiblemente tres en, en, en el equipo nacional de ellas. Eh, las voy a leer rápidamente. Chin, strong, eh, strong side chin, eh, point, corner, que es esquina, eh, por encima de la esquina o en el poste. Y las entradas eran pues, eh, en el lado contrario, con las alas fuera o brush, que, que ahora veremos. I think I always um, would hear people say, when I was studying Princeton, I studied it for about five years before we put it in with the national team. And when I was studying it, lots of people were saying, you have to run it in its entirety. That's the only way it can be effective. And again, I disagree with that, that I believe you can add one or two phases to something else you're doing. I believe you can run one or two entries into a phase as a special or a set. I think it's possible. Ok, dice que cuando empezó ella a estudiarle este sistema de ataque, Princeton, hace cinco, cinco años antes de implementarlo en el equipo nacional, eh, que, la, que la mayoría de la gente le decía que hay, hay que in, eh, implementarlo de forma completa, de forma entera, eh, como, como sistema de ataque único. Eh, pero que ella cree que se pueden añadir fases eh, en, en cualquier tipo de ofensiva eh, y entradas eh, de forma parcial. Um, so this is a, a little video and I, I'm, I'm not going to talk over it too much because mostly I just want to for everybody to see how it kind of flows. And uh, it was us just walking through, running through our, um, our sets in China the year, the right before the Olympics, I think the Olympic qualifier. So I'll just start it. And if I do make a couple comments, um, I guess we could. Okay. Dice que va a poner el vídeo, que no quiere hablar demasiado sobre el vídeo, que lo va a dejar funcionar, que a lo mejor un par de comentarios, eh, que hay algunas pues en el, en el walkthrough o, o cuando, en el, antes de, en, en, cuando estuvieron en China antes de, del campeonato. Yeah, and just so everybody can see the flow. But okay. I'll, get, I'll get past this first couple of stuff. Yeah. Right to, there we go. So this is a, a chin phase, which is a two guard front high post and, and two wings, and it's kind of, we'll just flow through and at least people can see how it looks. Okay. That's uh, a drift screen, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Inicia con, con dos guardias, dos alas y un poste. So that was one, that was chin, and this is strong side chin, which is, you'll see that's a wings out entry, and then we reverse to the other side, and now we're getting into a little dribble at, hand off with a flare screen offside. So the actions are, are um, they're quick, but they can flow. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's another little into the, so we screening, meeting at the elbow, screening action, coming off a mid high ball screen to a lift and then we hit our triangle. Okay, estamos mm -hmm. viendo las, las series chin, chin en el lado contrario, con los, los alas fuera. Eh, de cómo, cómo sube el poste, se juega las pantallas y los cortes sobre el poste, una pantalla en el lado contrario. And then those three things can all flow. So now we can get into um, the chin. This is called a drift screen. 
and then she just reverses it and the po low post the post goes from high to low okay el poste va arriba y abajo eh, se le da la vuelta al balón eh, que se pueden conectar todas estas acciones that's a brush entry we call that okay lo que llamaba como brush entry antes So lot, lots of DHOs, dribble handoffs. Um, and then obviously there's opportunities to penetrate from the top and coming off a mid ball screen. Okay, pues ahí vemos varios manos a mano y cómo se puede penetrar desde, desde arriba a partir del mano a mano. So away is an entry where we just cut away, she just cuts away. And then anytime we're dribbled at, we're looking to back cut. Okay. Eh, que la entrada que llaman away es, es pasar, irse al lado contrario, cortar hacia afuera, que en cualquier momento se puede hacer una puerta atrás. And, yeah. And if there's two on the side, dribble that, you're back screening. Or sorry, you're back cutting. <laughs> sí. Hay, cuando hay dos en el mismo lado, que uno de ellos tiene que cortar a canasta. A lot runs through the high post, so your high post has to be a good decision maker, good passer. Okay. Could... El jugador que juega en el poste alto tiene que ser un buen pasador y con buena toma de decisiones. Good. I won't go through the specials, but I did want to talk about why we chose to run the Princeton offense with Canada because it's an offense you don't see internationally. And um, I think a lot of people questioned when we were going to do it. So I'd like to talk about why we did it, just so coaches can decide maybe Maybe I can use it. Ok, que sobre todo, que, que luego irá sobre las situaciones especiales, pero que sobre todo ella quiere hablar sobre por qué, por qué eligió el sistema ofensivo de Princeton, eh, porque a lo mejor algún entrenador de repente decide, oye, ¿por qué no juego yo? ¿Por qué no eh, implemento yo esto en mi equipo? So, it's a motion offense that's predicated on team play more than individual play, and I think that suits Canadians, and it suited our team. Ok, que se ajustaba a, a, al tipo de jugador canadiense, de jugadora canadiense y a su equipo, porque es un sistema eh, que, en la que se predomina el, el trabajo colectivo más que el individual. Um, we had really, really intelligent players. They had good basketball IQs, smart. Ok, que, que tienen jugadores inteligentes con buen IQ. <laughs> Um, we don't, didn't have a large number of players that cr could create well on their own, so they needed help to get to the rim. So ball screens, dribble handoffs, so um, they weren't super creative on their own. Okay, que no tenían en ese momento un, un número elevado de jugadoras que pudieran crear ellas mismas, que podían generar, y que a través de este, del mano a mano, de las pantallas y demás, pues, pues fueron mejorando esa situación. But I loved them anyway. <laughs> que las quiere de todas las um, I don't, we didn't have the depth of talent that's an international experience some of the teams and therefore we felt we had to be a better team play better together and um, part of that was I think we uh, at London I think we were the second youngest team in the London Olympics and hence we had a, an even better team in Rio and I think we'll be even better in, in Japan I won't be there but because we didn't have the depth, we felt we had to play more as a team, and Princeton would help us with that. Okay, que no tenían en ese momento, pues, una profundidad de talento eh, y, y con experiencia internacional tan importante como algunos de los equipos que iban a enfrentar, y porque eso, por eso se debe, debían intentar ser mejor equipo y comportarse mejor como equipo. Que en Londres eran, pues, el segundo equipo más joven del campeonato y que de campeonato en campeonato fueron fueron mejorando y que el sistema de ataque Princeton les les ayudó a eso. Um, I said this one before. It's uh, not used much internationally, so we thought we might be difficult to scout and prepare for. Okay, que como también como era un sistema de ataque que no es tan utilizado internacionalmente, pues se iban a convertir en un equipo más difícil de de que les hicieran scouting. Um, it's a great offense to help our players get 
back cuts to the basket, ball screens to get the athletes to penetration off ball screening action and post-ups for bigger guards. So I felt that we could take advantage of the things that we had, which was bigger guards. We posted them up um, off ball screening action. We were very good at reading screens, understanding how to, how to read a screen and um, getting back cuts just to give us an easy hoop. Ok, que es un sistema de ataque en el que pues, los jugadores encuentran pues, puertas atrás, cortes eh, a canasta, eh, pueden jugar también eh, pantallas, pantallas directas eh, para ayudarse en penetra penetrar a canasta, eh, que podían postear y también los bases o guardias eh, de buen tamaño suyos pues, eh, podían encontrar esas ventajas. Um, help cut down on our turnovers because I think there's enough structure for uh, the players to understand where the scoring might come from. Okay, que, que minimizaban, que bajaban el número de pérdidas porque pues, sus jugadoras eh, conocían eh, a través de ese juego estructurado dónde iba a suceder la siguiente jugada y, y era más difícil que perdieran el balón. And last, last but not least, I think people believe that there's not an opportunity for creativity in this offense, but I think there really is. It has good structure and excellent spacing, and I still think it allows for reading and creativity. Muy bien. Que es un sistema de ataque eh, que tiene un bu muy buen spacing, que tiene una buena estructura de juego, y que esto permite eh, pues, ese margen de creatividad de las jugadoras y de leer y de tomar decisión. Um, I'll just briefly talk about running it with our high school team. What, like why we did that. So excellent spacing for young players. Que ahora, ahora, ¿por qué utiliza este sistema de ataque con su equipo de, de preparatoria, de high school? Pues que tiene un, un spacing excelente para jugadores jóvenes. And I, I'm thinking when I say youth, so I have uh, 15 to 17 year olds for me. Son de 15 a 17 años los jugadores. Um, I, th I just like the various actions and they prepare athletes for any offense in the future. And I feel like um, we'll, have, uh, our, we'll have quite a few players, maybe five, that will go on to university play and I, uh, to play at university and hopefully some maybe with the national team. And I feel like I want to teach them more than just ball screen. I want them to understand the game in many different forms. So this helps. Eh, este sistema de ataque, como tiene gran variedad de, de situaciones, pues que, que va a poder preparar a sus jugadoras para, para cualquier sistema de ataque en un futuro, eh, que posiblemente tiene cuatro o cinco jugadoras que, que jugarán universitario y que lo que quiere es ayudarlas más allá de este momento para que puedan valerse eh, más adelante. Um, I think teaching subtleties of how to cut and read screens. Okay, uh, subtleties is um, the tricks of the trade, kind of the okay. little things, the little things. Okay, que, details. Exactamente. Que puede enseñarle eh, detalles y cuándo cortar y cuándo y, y, y las situaciones, todas las situaciones que aparecen en las pantallas, eh, cuál elegir. Uh, I think helping players. Sometimes you have a big guard, or you have a. a a bigger forward that can step out. And this allows you to put your players in different positions on the floor at any time. It can, like I said, so it helps players develop their inside outside game. Que además, eh, pues eh, teniendo jugadores grandes que pueden, que pueden votar y que pueden jugar eh, lejos de canasta y, y, y movedores o bases que pueden jugar cerca de canasta o postear pues que también les ayuda a, a jugar en diferentes posiciones eh, y ese tipo de juego dentro o fuera. Sí. And uh, promotes team play at the youth level, so I think you help to develop many players instead of one or two. And uh, there's always those late maturing kids that you want to stay in the game. So it helps to develop more than one or two players. Que ayuda a promover el, el juego en equipo, que sea más participativo entre todos los jugadores del equipo y que se puedan desarrollar más de uno o dos jugadores eh, como en otros sistemas ofensivos que tienen todo el tiempo el balón, eh, pues este sistema de ataque es favorable para esa situación. And I still think there's opportunities to play one-on-one -on -one and create off the dribble, which kids like to do. 
Muy bien. Que también se generan oportunidades para jugar uno contra uno y gener, crear a partir del bote, eh, penetrar y doblar, penetrar y descargar, eh, que, pues, que también les gusta a los, a los jugadores. Uh, I think develops passing skills because all five players have to be able to pass the ball. Sí, que, que también se desarrollan las habilidades para pasar en todos los jugadores, en, en los cinco jugadores, no, no en uno solo. All right, so some of the offensive concepts that are taught through the um, Princeton offense. So the first thing is every time someone dribbles at someone, uh, they're either coming for a handoff or a back cut, and that's a read. And I think always there's a choice. Ahora vamos con situaciones de tres contra tres y cada vez que se produce eh, un, un mano a mano, ya sea en bote o no, eh, que todas esas lecturas que tienen que hacer los jugadores saliendo de esa situación, eh, bueno, pues son decisiones que hay que tomar. Uh, just playing off the low post. So if the pass goes into the low post, you can Laker cut cut to the basket or there can be a screening action you can space so we're teaching them how to play once the pass has gone into the low post okay. que jugando desde el, desde el poste bajo desde meter el balón en el poste eh, pues se producen situaciones como el Laker cut que es un corte a canasta o bien eh, eh, al revés yendo fuera de a poner una pantalla y, y generar más espacio uh, screening actions Las acciones de pantalla uh, back screen action so they're learning how to play off a set and play off a back screen okay, las, las puertas atrás eh, y cómo jugar esas situaciones um, high post rub or UCLA cut that's it can be included ok, el rub desde el poste alto eh, como el corte de ucla que también puede ser incluida en este sistema ofensivo uh, When a dribble at flare screen, so again, a concept that could be in a different offense, but if someone's dribbling at, we can come in from the wing and, and flare the other guard, flare screen. Okay, eh, que cuando uno de los jugadores está votando, se puede producir una situación de flare en el, en el, la, fuera de ese bote, que, si, que es poner una pantalla al jugador que, que a la espalda del jugador para que tire. Uh, and mid-high ball screens, so. Y, y pues pantallas o pick and roll o bloqueos centrales. And uh, you can also do side ball screens. We actually took them out of our offense because I just felt that internationally the women were defending it too well. There was a lot of trapping, the rotations were good and we were getting nothing off it. So you can get side ball screens too, but we took them out. Okay, que, que también se pueden jugar las pantallas en, en un lado, ¿no? eh, eh, pero que ella la, las ha eliminado de su sistema ofensivo porque pues, internacionalmente se ven involucrados en situaciones de dos contra uno y rotaciones defensivas en las que no conseguían muchas ventajas. Um, right, so this is a little uh, video also of us playing and I want to talk through this a bit, but I think video in this format is the best way to show it. I think if I have diagrams, I get lost and you get lost. So we're just going to watch a little, a little video and um, hopefully I can talk through it. Okay, va a poner otro, otro video porque pues a lo mejor a partir de diagramas nos perdemos un poco, pero, pero a lo mejor en el video se ve un poco más claro. Luis, I think it's just a lot of work for you. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm... You're great. You're doing great. It's great. Uh, all right, so this was just some film my husband put together. Uh, so, so transition entries, we talked about that. So this is the first entry Oop. i think you could hear that yeah uh so our guard cuts away we come to do and always going through the high post that's called a point and now we get a mid-high ball screen but we ended up with that now we slow it down here so our guard passed ahead and she cuts away and then we just trail in with our trail four or in this case it's a three china switches this but they lose track of our shooter so on the switch We second cut that and she's open. Okay, que por ejemplo, en esa situación, eh, China eh, cambiaba, pero perdió de vista el, el tirador. Meet at the elbow. And that's where we get to post up our bigger guards. We'll see that one again here. Okay, la entrada en el poste alto. I post entry. Encuentro un tirador en la esquina y balón interior. And we didn't have um, 
we didn't have a low post player that um, that scored a lot, so we posted up our big guards. Que no tienen un jugador determinante en el poste bajo, pero que con sus guardias. That's called the, the uh, that screen right there where she hit the three. That's called our drift screen. So here we go again. Okay. She cuts este through away. She drift. gets dribbled that back cut. Hay una puerta atrás. That's, now she's gone off the chin cut. And then this is called the drift screen. And the girl, uh, player from China goes under it. So we get a nice wide open three. There's a lot of movement involves all five players. So here's another entry. Otro tipo de entrada. Ahí. Rush to get our post open. That's Natalia Chanwa, who plays in the WNBA. And they all leave her, so she's open. Okay, so la entrada brush. It's not great quality film, but. Meeting at the elbow, that's, she kind of tight curls that. And then. Con el balón pass, en el everybody's gone. Wings out is another entry where we dribble at and just exchange. Okay, esta es con las con los aleros Here's fuera. Esta es otra entrada. Drift en la screen. Que hay un intercambio. Ooh, good screen. <laughs> and that's another opportunity to post up one of our bigger bigger guards, guard forwards. Otra oportunidad para para que postee una de sus eh, bases altas. That's what I was saying. I think there's still opportunities if you play it high and with good spacing to be able to penetrate. And we get a, a great penetration here while everybody's worried about all the cutting. Todas esas situaciones jugando ahí tan arriba como están jugando los aleros. Pues, so those were some entries. And then you'll see some, some similar film. But this is a low post phase. So again, we didn't have a scorer in the post. So. A big score. No tienen una gran anotadora en el cut, Phil. That's one nice take. Pero ahí llenan esa posición con, con alguno de sus bases, de sus movedoras. Again, pass into the low post and then we get that Laker cut, Phil, and then she has an opportunity to attack. But the spacing is great and there's lots of movement. Mucho movimiento, buen spacing. So the post is often going from low to high. And in this situation, they they get the ball low, they kick it out, and they flash high. So that's the way she cuts. And we're kicking it out right back into her. And that's a drift screen. And so all, none of that is actually set. Like it's not set. It's just them reading what happens next and where the ball goes. Okay, que son lecturas de so juego. Que no es nada que esté predeterminado. And then, so anytime there's a dribble at, that's a back cut. And then this is called the drift screen. Cada vez que botan hacia mí, it's hay una puerta atrás. Screen, so, tough to guard. Okay. It's a drip, drip screen. And again, here, low post phase. Kind of Laker cut, a little bit kick out, back in. And again, nice coming off a high ball screen. Finds the open one in the corner. Okay. And again, spacing. Players know where other players should be. A través de ese spacing, las jugadoras saben dónde. post donde... phase, and she doesn't have anything, kicks it right out and flashes right back high. And then that's point meeting at the elbow right here. One back cut, one fill. Puerta atrás. La pantalla. Las jugadoras saben dónde están sus compañeras. Um, and so this is the point phase when you get into a one guard front. Chin phase has a two guard front and point has a one guard front. I think we showed this one. Con dos, con dos so she comes, yeah, one guard front, back to the high post. Ahora es con un, un, un único base Just a poor switch by China. En ese cambio de China, pues pierden al tirador. And I think if you sometimes work it down far enough in the shot clock, you end up with something good because you've moved them. So we go into point again. This is the one we skip over and we get it into our big guard. Aquí la pantalla solo la marcan 
y hacen un skip de la pantalla para cortar a canasta. Que realmente no se llega a producir la pantalla. Good post up, and that's where we knew we had an advantage against some teams with our bigger guards. Okay. No ha recibido, pero puede postear porque so, tiene ventaja. In the Princeton offense, they tell you to do a lot of tight curls and rejections when, when they meet at the, at the elbow. Yeah. So here we go. That's the chin cut here. And right here, this tight curl is what you try to tell your players to do. Either reject back cut the screen or tight curl it probably 70% of the time. Okay. But you still want to read. Mm -hmm. Que son, son lecturas a partir de ese... De ese corte ceñido a canasta. And so there's, again, Japan just got a little messed up on a switch. Pues ahí hemos visto como Japón en And el... I think you can create shot. Oh, we've, we've looked at this one, but you can create shots uh, for three point shooters if on the tight curl and then they get kind of stuck behind. Eh, que por supuesto se pueden tomar tiros de tres cada vez que pasan por debajo una pantalla. They did come back to give Australia a good game. They lost, but. <laughs> Esta es. Una remontada so there again, it's just kind of tight curling. We often talk about curl through contact, so curl and really take someone out on your curl cut. So that's our point. Meet at the elbow, tight curl, second cut, shot. Okay. Cada vez que cortan a canasta, haciendo un curl, un rizo, eh, insiste... That's called a brush entry where we kind of screen the big. Okay. En hacer contact. Tight curl. Okay. Second cut, and again, a little messed up on the switch. El segundo corte, cuando quieren cambiar. So then, in this one, it's tight curl. We don't hit it, and we get a middle ball screen. Aquí es con una pantalla. Tight curl, second cut. Rizo el segundo cortador, le ponen una pantalla. Thank goodness we get the rebound. A través del rebote. There it is again. Está ese rizo. Y es el segundo cortador el que recibe la pantalla. So, and also in, in um, Princeton, there's a lot, often you're told to reject or drive away from the, the ball screen. So in this case, we go low post phase with a cut. You kick out, meet, and then she doesn't use the screen because she can just get by people. And so, That, that also we encourage them to do, not always use the ball screen, but reject it. Okay. Uh, cuando habla de reject, back, es cut, no utilizar la pantalla. She just the ball screen. Utilizar el lado contrario. Often de... teams aren't expecting you to not use the ball screen. Okay. No todos los equipos. That's the chin cut. Now we're into the point phase. Okay. And now we're into the mid-high ball screen, but she rejects it. Okay. Uh, I need... Vemos ahí como va a poner el pick and roll, pero agarra el lado contrario. And again, this is another point phase. El point, recordemos que es con un único movedor. She slips it, dribble at, back cut. So you don't get a lot of those, but you can get some pretty important ones. We got one huge one in the game against Great Britain at the Olympics to put us up five or seven, I think. So yeah. she's denied, you just dribble at and back cut. And we spend a lot of time practicing those. Okay. Esas puertas atrás que, que las que se consiguen son importantes. And that's the point que... phase again. Tight curl. Oh, yep. Dribble that again. Igual, una puerta atrás aprovechando Anytime que... Anytime you can get a layup on Australia, you've done something pretty good because they're tough defensively. <laughs> y algunas, algunas coladas, algunas bandejas contra Australia que es difícil de conseguir. Que son duras defensivamente. Um, so again, point away, we accept the screen and then go into a dribble handoff. Okay. So now she just comes right off it. Ahora sí, juega nice la pantalla. To the hoop. So again, the players are reading and the decision is never the same. So it's difficult to scout and difficult to defend. Son todo lecturas de las jugadoras difíciles de scoutear. Point phase, este es comes off it tight. Point phase, la serie. Drop coverage, and she gets a nice pull-up jumper. Okay. And like I said, we didn't have players that created really well on their own, but they were very good off ball screens. And so she just accepts that. Buenas generando, pero sí 
a partir de las pantallas de tiro de media distancia. Porque so, um, like I said, you can it can be continuous or you can score on a quick hit. Que, que se puede darle más yeah, this is al ataque. point when you go over, and so it's a bit of a flex action and a down screen. Again, that's a read. The point guard decides where she's going to go, so she just makes the pass. So that's a brush to get open. Now she decides to go over. And then the flex cut that, and we post up our bigger guards that kick it out for three. Is this other over point? Again. And then they're just going to flow into a ball screen or whatever action that they see. Yes. <laughs> son lecturas, son lecturas de las jugadoras. And so that, that part set, the decision now is whatever, however she reads it. And then we're coming off and then again, space out and now play off a ball screen a little later into the shot clock. I'm not sure what we're at, 10, 9. Yeah. So we got that shot at eight seconds left on the shot clock. Okay. Cuando quedan pocos segundos, mm. van esa pantalla. So she comes at, it's dribble at back, and then she comes off, that's the drift screen. But we had a good one-on-one -on -one take there. We try to post up one of our bigger guards. So we're trying to post up 15 here. She's about 6'4". And so, but they, she gets that around that. And so we just have an opportunity to take it to the rim. But anytime we dribbled and spun, we just sent someone in to get post up. Okay, que mandan a alguien al poste a partir de ese bote. Por lo mismo, porque te mide 6'4". That's the chin cut. There's the... Corte. And sometimes you don't execute perfectly. That should be more in the middle of the floor, but we did it with some good speed. And definitely in Princeton, you want players to play with speed, cut hard. Que corten fuerte a canasta, que jueguen con velocidad, con That's a ritmo. tight curl again. There's the second cut. Ese rizo, segundo corte y la pantalla. Y insistía en el, la velocidad con la que hay que jugar. That's the chin action. Now the point action. La serie chin. El point, ¿verdad? Again, chin cut, point action, rejects it, Go comes table. off that, look back opposite because there's the tag helping from the corner and then she's able to attack the closeout. So this is the basis of, of Princeton to me. It's the two guard front and you start with your chin cut, just that basic cut and you can decide, again, we reverse it. We knew we had a, an opportunity to attack and so she just saw she saw that opportunity. Que esa es la estructura principal para ella con dos con dos guardias iniciando con and dos bases al frente. That's a good attack. If she does reverse it off chin like that, she comes off what we call the drift the drift screen. So that's what we're going to look at a little bit here. Okay, con ese espacio para so poder there, penetrar. Off the chin. Now she comes off the drift. So you can get one of your quickest players in the middle of the floor to attack. So it, it takes people out of help side. And basically that this is the only two or three phases we have with our high school team and then they just play. Okay. Getting the ball in the middle of the court to attack is a good place. So now if they fade the drift screen, so here she fades it. Oh yeah. She goes, so she went under it, so we have a shot. Cuando pasan por debajo esa pantalla. So there, chin. And she gets caught underneath, it kind of curls it. Como ahí la jugadora francesa pasa por debajo, pues regresa para tirar. Chin cut. Drift screen. La pantalla drift. And attack from the top. A good way arriba. to find a, an ISO for one of your players up at the top too. También pueden encontrar aclarados. Drift screen again, and to a shot. Y la pantalla the screening three. action is hard to defend because people jump to the ball, right? They get to the ball and then they're out of position on the drift screen. Que como en ese pase saltan al balón es fácil de atacar. 
I think she doesn't know if she's back cutting or getting the back screen. Um, and when the, yeah, so then you can, if, if you don't have a shot, so we get the drift screen again here. Okay. There you go. She comes off the drift, but doesn't feel like she doesn't have anything, right? So she can get another action going. She just cuts the corner and we play off the high post again. And that's called corner over. And we just play off that back cut, second cut. Corner over. And then everybody's clearing the space, trying to get above the, uh, mm -hmm. get above the foul line. So there's that chin cut, drift screen. She didn't like it, over. I think sometimes all the movement, which is difficult to teach, but all the movement is also difficult to defend. I think a lot of teams tried to switch screens and um, a lot of teams tried to keep it out of the high post. That's just a slip that we have to teach the post player. That's Natalie Achanwa, who still plays in the WNBA. Um, you have to teach them how to slip the screen. So pass here, she comes to, you can see the biggest cheating. So she just slips there, get confused on a switch. And then we get a mismatch with their, their guard guarding her post. And if you curl the drift, uh, which is, then you get into kind of a five out, which is, is great. I think this is a curl. Uh, oh, curl. Uh, for that. So again, players have to read. They can use the drift, get a three, or they can curl the drift. And I think again, in this case, that ca she can shoot, so they tailed her off that. And the spacing's so good that there's no real help side down there. Muy buen spacing porque no hay lado de ayuda. Um, oh, and, and you can always get back to the, the two guard front and get back into chin. So we go off the drift here, there, doesn't like it, nothing, going over. Oh, that's a nice pass. <laughs> Chin, drift, slip. And this is called corner over. Now she's going over and meeting her at the elbow. And players cut pretty hard when they think they can get a layup, when they think they might score. That, that's not so bad. Que cortan fuerte y con convicción porque saben que van a conseguir una bandeja. Chin cut, drift curl, five out, dribble at. That was the one we were up three on Great Britain, and to, I mean we I don't know if we got another wide open one, but sometimes it just happens late in the shot clock or late in the game. Okay. Cuando... And you got to hold and hold, hold, wait, and then go at the right time, obviously, for the back cut. Okay. So that was... hacia ellas y and the, that cuatro. should happen more. And then I haven't talked about this yet. We'll just do a few more, but this is strong side chin. So when we don't reverse it, we go back to the same side. Okay. So a little wings Cuando out. En el lado fuerte, back to this. Oh, back to the same side. Regresan al, regresan That's mismo la, la boca del there. Coming off, and then there's a little flare screen, but she gets a little jumper coming off that. Coach, again, coach. again, it's two and three player actions, but it's also people waiting um, to get another action, of a flare screen on the offside. Una pantalla, un flare Good timing lado. right there. Coach. So that's, so that we're playing both sides of the floor. We called that strong side chin and chin. Okay. En los dos lados de la cancha. And strong side chin, just finding the post on the a roll to the basket. There's just so many options, and I, it's almost like if you if you like it, you're going to have to go study it. <laughs> Dime, Iván. Si nos puede dar una pausa en cada bloque para procesar para, sobre todo por la traducción, ¿no? Pero pero sí este para para verlo en cada bloque no es necesario creo tanto pararla, pero sí en cada bloquecito. Si le puede decir. Okay. Coach. Thank goodness we got the rebound. Yeah. Uh, and so again, strong side chin can also lead back to your triangle, which is just another thing that you would teach and would be uh, useful in any ball screen offense. 
Okay. Ahora está en la serie en el lado fuerte, que se regresa al mismo lado. Back. And open. El balón lo vuelven al mismo lado. Y ahí queda el tirador abierto. Después de ese corte, el balón entra en el poste alto. En, ese, en esa pantalla, mano a mano. Y luego el tag helps on the, on the post roll and you get a wide open three. And again, there's, it's all two and three player actions. And so they're actions that can be used, I think, in almost any offense. So this is um, coming up, we talked about the flare screen action. So that's uh, the high post rub, strong side chin, the dribble at, and here comes the flare 21 sitting up for eight. And then she attacks and we get a post up. Acciones que involucran a dos, tres jugadores. And so I do like the, the variety that Princeton offers uh, a team. And again, you can tailor it to your team's strengths. Okay. Y como puedes ajustar Dribble handoff. And here comes 21 in setting the flare for eight. And normally La she'd mano. shoot that, but that's good D. She gets some middle penetration and then. And China is a very difficult team to score against inside unless you're moving them because they're so big. And they're very talented. Si no es un equipo alto y talentoso, que es difícil de moverlos. And then again, instead of think, you're thinking you're coming off the flare screen, she just slips it. So none of that, again, that's not set. That's reading for players to read. And even here, she's just getting ridden off the screen. So just, you know, go to space, keep it flowing. Son lecturas a partir de las pantallas que no está, no está llamada, no es una llamada. And I think Princeton does, um, because you practice it in the, in the breakdown drills, does get you to um, back cut a lot more. I, I thought once we put Princeton, we were a team that just looked to back cut a lot more. And that's just nice. She just reads the, um, that was just a read on that, on the um, chin cut. So, she, or on the high post rub, she starts the rub, she cheats over and she just rejects it and pops back for, for three. Que es a partir de, de descomponerlo en los entrenamientos. Como se I'll just do más. one more phase, I think. People are probably getting a bit tired, but it's corner over with a tight curl. La otra fase. So here, chin, drift, reverse. I think we've shown this one, corner over, and the tight curl. And again, all of these phases just flow together, and the players make the decision based on where the ball goes. Yes. Los jugadores toman decisiones, depende de dónde va el balón en todas estas fases. Um, ok, I'm going to stop it there. <laughs> Va a parar aquí. And, um, yeah, I, I think the uh, biggest thing is just I wanted everybody to see the flow and that you go from, it can be different entries into different phases. You could limit your entries, you could limit your phases, you can expand them. Uh, and uh, I think the biggest thing is that the players, once they've been taught all the three on three breakdowns, they learn how to flow. Okay, que puedes limitar el número de fases y de entradas de, de, que tú juegas, pero que es a partir de cómo vas enseñando a los jugadores en, en los en tres contra tres. Yes, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Sí se me escucha, que como descomponiendo en tres contra tres es como, como enseña esas fases. Ok, so things we do in our practice. Uh, we play a lot of three on three, a lot of three on three with various screening actions. And we, we did it with the national team, a lot of three on three. And we also did it, uh, do it with our high school team. So our coaching staff might say, ok, we're going to go with a high post rub, uh, with a DHO, dribble handoff. Uh, to whatever, like we dictate it and then they play out of it. It's a lot of three on three. Okay, que hacen muchísimo tres contra tres, eh, introduciendo todos esos conceptos y variantes. Eh, el, la entrada en el poste alto, el mano a mano, y lo, ahí, a partir de ahí juegan los jugadores. Uh, so that would include dribble at back cuts. Okay. Eh, los cortes a canasta, las puertas atrás eh, cuando botan hacia mí. 
uh, chin cut, which is the back screen, and then post up because we like to post up our bigger guards. But I also feel like it's important to everybody to understand how to post up so you can even post up or pass into a post. Okay, este corte desde desde la serie chin, una puerta atrás en la que no consigue ventaja, pero se quedan posteando. Que es importante que aprendan a postear los jugadores con ventaja. Uh, the, the UCLA cut into a dribble handoff. Okay, el corte de Ucla eh, que se continúa uh, con mano a mano. High post centers. So we'll enter directly into the high post playing three on three and then have a, a point, a wing and a high post into the high post and then just a screening action at the, at the uh, elbow. Okay, esa entrada del balón en el poste alto y pues, con tres jugadores, con el ala, con el movedor y con el poste y esas situaciones que, que, que ocurren en, entre los tres en esa pantalla. Uh, dribble at elbow flare screen, I think we've talked about that a couple times. Ok, el, el bote hacia el codo y, y la simultánea, el, el flare que sucede simultáneamente. And then the mid-high ball screen, which so many offenses run around, uh, you know, are working around ball screens now that I think anytime we can teach kids how to come off a ball screen, how to slip a ball screen, um, and then form the triangle with the post is, is good offense. Ok, ese lo llaman en el medio y arriba la pantalla, el pick and roll. Eh, y, y como a partir de ahí podemos enseñar otras cosas como no utilizar la pantalla, ir a poner la pantalla y cortar a canasta. All right, so within our practice, I think that obviously you're going to go five on zero, so five on O and running through kind of all the possible options. Eh, que por supuesto que en, en, en tu entrenamiento puedes eh, hacerlo en 5 contra 0 y, y jugar todas esas posibles opciones. But I think what's really important is what you do day to day. And so again, every, every day with both the national team and with our high school team, we work on spacing, cutting, back cutting and passing. And we do it every day and we do it with defense. So not like uh, what I showed earlier when we were in China, just the running through, we'll do that just to keep the movement, but we hardly ever do it five on five. It's all the breakdowns. Okay, que todo esto lo trabajan con defensa, ya sea en dos contra dos, tres contra tres, cuatro contra cuatro, todas esas situaciones de spacing, de cortar a canasta, de puertas atrás, eh, pasar, lo hacen todos los días, rara vez lo hacen en cinco contra cinco, eh, eh, sobre todo en... en Situaciones de dos contra dos, tres contra tres, cuatro contra cuatro. I also think, you know, with, with uh, youth players, with younger players, um, when you're going two on two, three on three, or four on four, then you're getting more touches, more decision making, more reads. And when we're always playing five on five, it's one or two players that get all the decision making, all the reads. So I think, again, with young players, I like to see the small sided games uh, where it's three on three, four on four, two on two, and there's lots of touches and lots of decisions to be made. Okay, que sobre todo para jugadores jóvenes, pues eh, descomponiéndolo en estas situaciones, eh, pues eh, se producen más veces tocan el balón, más veces tienen que tomar decisiones, eh, que a lo mejor en cinco contra cinco, pues eso se reduce a uno, dos, tres jugadores, o, o hay algunos que, que no están involucrados en el juego. And um, we work on penetration principles every single day in some form. So it's my belief that when, you know, you could have any kind of offense, but once someone beats someone, you're out of offense, like it's over. I don't, I don't care what offense is run. If, if I now get by my, my person and I'm getting into the lane, offense is over. And so we talk every day about penetration principles in some form. Ok, que de alguna manera todos los días hablan sobre los principios eh, a partir de una penetración, ¿no? Y está comentando cómo eh, en esas situaciones de uno contra uno dentro de, del ataque, eh, pues que en algunos momentos si, si consigue una ventaja, ahí se termina el ataque. And um, so we, we have, they may be similar to other places in the world, I've seen other countries do this, so if we have a baseline drive, we have a baseline drift on the far side. We have someone that follows and we have someone at the 45 degree. And then the post has some different rules, but it's always, we just say baseline drift, or sorry, baseline drive, drift, follow 45. That's kind of how we do it. 
que, que a partir de una penetración por la línea base, pues eh, se, se suceden esas situaciones. Alguien que eh, sigue esa posición, alguien que eh, está en 45 grados en el lado contrario y alguien que está en la línea de fondo haciendo ese drift. Uh, then, if we drive baseline at the low post ball side, she pops up the lane. Ok, si penetran por la línea de fondo con el, con el poste bajo ocupado. Eh, And if we drive middle at the low post, she steps to the short corner on ball side. Ok, si penetran por encima del poste bajo en el lado del balón, eh, pues postean hacia, hacia el short corner, la, la esquina corta. Se mueven hacia la esquina corta o hacia arriba. Uh, if we drive baseline at an opposite low post, then she'll move to the front of the rim. She'll circle to the front of the rim. Ok, y si el poste está en el lado contrario a la penetración, pues se mueve eh, hacia el centro, hacia el... Hacia and if el... we drive middle at an opposite low post, she actually circles under the hoop. And we get that one probably as much as anything if we can get middle. So, again, once the offense is broken down, everybody's got to move. Ok, y la última situación era con el poste en el lado contrario y la penetración es hacia el centro, ¿no? Pues el, el poste se mueve en sentido contrario bajo la canasta, eh, que una vez que se genera esa ventaja en bote, todo el mundo se tiene que mover. And um, if we middle drive, then our perimeters can back cut usually, or if they're, if they're too late, sometimes they can just space out to three, but we like if we dribble at to, to back cut to clear space and create the double gap. Ok, los jugadores exteriores, que si, lo normal es que si votan hacia ellos, eh, pues les pide que haga una puerta atrás, pero a veces van tarde en el timing, y entonces lo que tienen que hacer es abrirse fuera de la línea de tres para generar espacio. And I think, again, you're going to do penetration, we're going to do some form of penetration, it could be in our shooting drills, it could be in some of our warm-up, two on two, three on three stuff, but we always want to talk about where are we going to move off penetration because we're hoping to get penetration, <laughs> and if we can get it and break down the defense, then we're, we're, out of the, we're out of whatever we're running, we're out of Princeton, but we're into moving Off, off penetration. Ok, que como lo que quiere generar esas situaciones de moverse a partir de una penetración, pues que lo, lo introduce pues ya sea en, el, en los calentamientos, en las eh, series de tiro, eh, para poder jugar a partir de, de esa penetración. Gracias. But I did, I did want to show, um, if I could show one quick little film um, of my high school team. Do I have time? Of course, yeah. yeah, yeah we have. Go on. Yeah. Yes, no? Yeah. There's time? Okay. So I have to unshare this screen and then I'll, uh, I'll share the other one. I'm about to share here. Hold on. There we go. So I think um, seeing it at the, at the highest, you know, the high level at the Olympics is one thing. Um, and like I said, I studied the offense for five years and was quite nervous about putting it in with Canada because it wasn't run internationally and it did take a while to put in. Um, but I'm, I think I, I'm glad we did because I think it made us different and difficult to scout and uh, I think it was well worth it. Okay, okay. Pues eso, okay. Que, que fue que todo el tiempo que emplearon en, en implementar esta ofensiva era difícil de de que les hicieran scouting y que todo, todo lo da por bien empleado. Okay, so this is just a really short, I think it's a, a three and a half minute clip of my high school team. And a lot of people played a zone, so we didn't get to run our Princeton that much, but uh, I've got a few clips and you can see, we just really have two entries, uh, wings out where we exchange and uh, just a reverse entry. And um, we mostly ran, we were a very good running team and we're a good offensive rebounding team. But when we did have to run our offense, This is kind of what it looked like. <laughs> okay. Tres minutos de video que son un equipo que corre bien, que carga bien el that? rebote ofensivo. So this is a wings out exchange. Intercambio de los chin cut. Aleros. And then nothing kind of breaks down, but she's open. I think this team might have been in a little bit of a triangle in two or something. So that's just a reverse entry and we get our point guard off the back screen. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just catching teams unaware. 
This is a big, big guard. She's about six two, number seven. So we like to try to get her inside outside. Uno de los movedores que tiene muy alta para que juegue interior también. Antes era parecía que era triángulo y dos. Cut. And we missed her, but she was open. It was a nice cut. And again, this will be, I think, just a direct entry. So just a reverse, and then she goes off. And now we, we kind of force in here, but we get just kind of a quick cut and then just a play. So it broke down, but you could see everybody moving to their penetration principle. Yeah, a partir de ese corte que todo el mundo se mueve. No importa que, que se rompa el ataque, se continúa el movimiento. And generally we're a pretty good rebounding team. Un, so here we go again. Como he dicho antes, que es un equipo Things que out. Bien. That's the chin cut. So we get her off that the first time. Just off the back screen. Same team. Second time they're like, okay, well, we're going to help off that. So they help off that. And then we just duck her back in. Okay. Como ayudan en ese corte. So again, another way to kind of move our players from inside to outside. And I like this on the wings out. And that's a counter to wings out. Uh, you don't get it at the highest level, but, but um, she just keeps her dribble on that one. Let me take that one back just a bit, sorry. So here, es she just keeps her dribble. Oh, no, not on that one. I got to go further. Sorry, coaches. Hit there, and then she just keeps her dribble. So instead of handing off, she just goes. Mm -hmm. como que va a jugar ese mano a mano y se queda con el balón. Era una jugada especial. Strong side. Regreso early early on the flare, but the right idea. It's a block. <laughs> Again, we're able to duck someone, and everybody is worried about the screening actions, and there's no help. Como puede recibir ahí en el poste. Keeps it again and attacks. Igual. Finta que va a jugar el mano a mano y penetra. And this one, little, so comes off the drift screen here. And then it's got a little bit of attack from the, um, from the hypo, from the middle of the court. Okay. So you can see we have the chin cut, the drift screen, the strong side chin. Uh, we had all those in, but mostly, like I said, we ran a lot. Todas esas There's the que chin cut. And here you can see she just kind of, she's sagging, and so she just rejects it to a wide open three. Okay, como queda abierta para el triple. Ah, there we go. We get out of that. Not sure. Um, okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I hope, well, hopefully that was useful and people found something out of that. It's difficult in this format, but um, I thought film was the best way and I really appreciate uh, you asking me to do it. And I'm, I want to encourage people, if you, if you like it, to study it because there's some really great things about Princeton, but it's, it's different and it's, uh, it's a bit of a commitment. Okay. Eh, que espera que haya sido de utilidad lo que nos ha mostrado que anima a los entrenadores a, a que incorporen este sistema ofensivo en sus equipos, que no es sencillo, pero, pero que es muy agradecido dar resultados. Muy bien, pues, pues muchas, muchas gracias, Coach, por la presentación. Este, vamos a ver si hay algunas preguntas en Facebook para hacérselas. No sé, Profe Luis, si usted quiera hacer alguna para ir arrancando mientras yo, busco yo. algo aquí. Prefiero que si hay, si tenéis ahí, mejor que aprovechemos las preguntas de los compañeros. Coach, oh. uh, do, do we have time for uh, some questions? I, I'm fine. I can certainly answer questions. Okay. So, <laughs> Ivan is going to look for. Bueno, por, ahora, por, ahora, por ahora solo hay saludos y agradecimientos. Si alguien quiere dejar alguna pregunta, por favor, pues es el momento, es el momento de hacerla. Hoy vamos un poquito rápido, pero sí, ¿no? Digo, al final del video es muy, muy gráfico. Sí. Es cuestión de analizarlo. La, el, la, 
charla se va a quedar aquí. Si alguien la quiere ver con más detenimiento, lo podrá hacer. Coach, bueno, how, how much uh, home defense you, you have found, uh, not only with your high school team, also uh, in the Olympics or, or, or the World Champ? Uh, and uh, does the teams change uh, the defense against Princeton? Uh, if they know you are going to play Princeton, they play more zone defense or not? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I, I think uh, it depends how well you run anything. And I think internationally, most teams don't, well, during my era, um, didn't run a lot of zone defenses. Uh, I would say more player to player, man to man, just because there's too many good players. Uh, I think the teams that, this might be kind of the question, the teams that um, defended us well, I think they tried to do a couple of things. One, they were very physical, very physical in our screening actions. Okay. Yo le preguntaba que, que con cuánta defensa en zona se encuentra y si sabiendo que van a jugar Princeton, alguno de los equipos eh, eh, varía esa forma de defenderles, ¿no? Y ella lo que dice es que sobre todo lo que, bueno, pues internacionalmente, eh, en las competiciones internacionales no se encuentra tanta zona, ¿no? Por, por, debido al, al talento y la calidad de las jugadoras involucradas. Pero lo que sí intentan es ser muy físicos, muy físicos en la defensa de las pantallas. I think with our high school team, we see a lot of teams that just try to sag. They just sag and try to plug up the middle and hope that you'll miss a three-point shot or something. But, um, and, and it did happen to us internationally a bit too, where teams just sagged off. But that was, I think, to our advantage because we could move the ball. So if they really hard deny, if you're prepared, you can get a few back cuts. And if they sag, then you can move the ball. Ok. Dice que, que independientemente de cómo les defiendan, eh, que normalmente en su equipo de high school pues, pues eh, ayudan más, ¿no? Que, que, pero, pero que internacionalmente, eh, tanto si les niegan y si les presionan la línea de pase, pues eh, tienen la oportunidad de hacer puertas atrás, ese backdoor cut, y si, y si al revés, si las defensas se cierran un poquito más, eh, pues que permiten que tengan ese movimiento de balón. Hope that answers the question. Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay. Muy bien. Nef, ¿tienes alguna pregunta? Aprovecha tú que estás aquí. <ríe> sí, porque lo que hay son muchos eh, comentarles, ¿no? Que hay muchos agradecimientos, muchos saludos, que a la gente le ha gustado mucho. Y, este, y bueno, yo más que una pregunta, este, es un comentario que, que suelo hacer, ¿no? O sea, muy bien, muy, muy claro todo. Lo que nos deja, si queremos implementarlo, es muchísimo trabajo. <ríe> porque... Es trabajo, trabajo y, y más trabajo, ¿no? Uh, coach uh, Ivan says that there, there are no questions uh, because uh, he thinks uh, uh, through the film it's gonna be it's gonna has been so clear. But there are a lot of there are a lot of people thanking you and congratulations about the the, the talk. And Ivan says that there's a lot of work for for the coaches to implement uh, from now on. Yeah, well, one thing I was going to say, you know, uh, when people talk about Princeton, there was a, when the Sacramento Kings had Vladi Divac, they, they ran a lot of Princeton. When um, New Jersey, now I'm going to forget who they had, uh, but the, the Nets ran it. And, and again, you could run part of it into something else, or it could be a set. I know the true Princeton people, they believe you should do it all, but I, I'm not, yeah. So, but I think it can be useful in many ways, and it's uh, a great offense. Ok, está hablando eh, de, de que lo, los Sacramento Kings, cuando tenían a Vlad Divac en el poste, jugaban eh, Princeton Office, ¿no? Y también estaba Pete Carril de, de, de asistente. Eh, <risa> y, y los Nets también han llegado a jugar Princeton. Eh, que lo, que los, los convencidos de Princeton, eh, pues se hablan de que de, tiene que ser el sistema ofensivo único, ¿no? Y, y predominante que tiene que jugar el equipo pero que ella cree que se pueden jugar partes y trozos de Princeton enganchando, encadenando con otras situaciones de juego. So, I, uh, Ivan, thanks again so much for asking me to do this. It's really fun. And I'd have to say I've missed hearing Spanish because when we're at the national team, we're always qualifying in South America somewhere, sometimes Portuguese, but mostly Spanish. And it's nice to hear it again. 
Eh, Iván, que pues eso, ya lo has entendido, que muchas gracias y que, que ha sido bueno para ella escuchar hablar en español de nuevo, aunque cuando juegan en, en, en América, pues también eh, escuchan español, a, a, supongo que portugués por Brasil, ¿no? Eh, pero que yeah, muchísimas sometimes. gracias. <risa> gracias, a, gracias a usted, coach. Nada más, una pregunta más que hay aquí. Este, ¿Cuánto tiempo le dedica de la, de la, del entrenamiento al, al trabajo de la ofensiva? Ok, coach, there's, there's a, one more question. Uh, is about how much time uh, do you spend working in offense in your practices? <laughs> That's a great question. So, as I like to say, I emphasize defense, but I spend way more time on offense because it's harder. It, it's harder to learn. And, uh, and so I, I emphasize defense. I get passionate about defense, but I, we spend way more time on offense. <laughs> okay. Eh, que hace mucho énfasis en la defensa en sus entrenamientos, eh, que es muy apasionada trabajando defensa, pero que dedica más tiempo al ataque por, pues porque no es tan, tan fácil enseñarlo e implementar este, este ataque. And if I had to give a percentage, I, I honestly might say 80-20, probably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Que si uh, tuviera que decir un poco. With, especially with the high school team, Luis. Yeah. Ok. Eh, que sobre todo en su equipo de high school, que si tuviera que decir un porcentaje, sería un 80% en ataque, un 20% en defensa. Muy bien. Bueno, pues vamos a cerrar. Este, de verdad, pues, muchas gracias, coach. Y, bueno, pues ha sido para nosotros un, un placer y un honor conocerla y ojalá podamos más adelante volver a tener algún, algún acercamiento, ¿no? volver a coincidir de, de algún modo virtual o presencialmente. Uh, coach, uh, it has been a, a pleasure for us uh, and we are so honored to have, have you here and <laughs> maybe we can stay in touch and, and have an, another option to, sure. to share with you. And you're expecting me to be like, Luis, I come down for two months or a month and I stay for five years. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much, guys. It was fun. And Luis, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Gracias okay. a todos. Bye bye. Thanks. Hasta luego, Thank hasta you. luego. <laughs> eh, todavía no me saques el René. Aún no me saques. Bueno, nos vemos el día de. Gracias a la gente que siguió la transmisión. Gracias, profe Luis, por la, por la traducción. Que mis compañeros están ayudando. Nos vemos el día de mañana. Mañana es el último día de conversatorio. A la una de la tarde, es el tiempo del centro de México. Estaremos con Facundo Burgos. Y a las, ocho, a las seis de la tarde, tiempo del centro de México, es. Vamos a estar todos los que hemos estado trabajando durante este tiempo. Estará abierto para los profes que han estado, por si alguno se quiere integrar y hacer algún comentario. Pero es más que nada hacer conclusiones, reflexiones de, de todo esto que estuvimos haciendo durante estos días, de la situación que estamos viviendo y, bueno, pues, pues este, despedirnos básicamente. Así que nos vemos el día de mañana. Muchas gracias. Hasta mañana. Listo, René. Nos puedes sacar de Facebook. <risa>